Okay, we're on. on. Yeah, we're on. Hey, this is Mike at Mylar Distilling. We got some new products to show you today. So we're going to start out with our new controllers. We've got these controllers out on the market for like a year now, and they're built very well. Uh, they've been working with no issues. So this is our single element controller. This works good with the 26 gallon. Actually, this will work for the 8s, 13s, and the 26. All right. This is our our dual. So this works really well with our, it works really well with the 26, the 53s, and uh, yeah. And we've got our quad. Look at this bad boy. It's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. But uh, this one works for like our 100 gallon boilers, 150 gallon boilers. It takes four heating elements. And this one you need to have a certified electrician hook this up. So that's just a lot of amps you're pushing this thing. You don't want, don't want to try to do it yourself. So let's uh, go around to the stills we're selling from Portugal. These things are beautiful. Uh, I'm really happy with these. They're becoming big sellers. And uh, these, this is something you can have in your living room. So they're, they're just a conversation piece. They're, they're functional. But look how, look how nice that is. These are basically a pot still. So you can make whiskeys, uh, keep your flavors in, schnapps, whatever. Uh, essential oils, of course. You know, making alcohol to drinks against the law, so it's just basically <laughs> for art, okay? Only for art. So I'll show you how it goes together real quick. So this just presses in there. It actually presses in pretty good. And this just sits in there. And you'd have your water flowing into, let me see, into here and out of here. Uh, let me show you this. We got a copper coil in the bottom there. All right. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Let's show you our new, this is our three inch. Hot still tower. Now, we started making these. Um, first, we used to braise them. And I just didn't like the way the, the brazing was looking. So we learned to TIG weld them. And I think we're the only company that actually TIG welds them. We found the right kind of rod and the right kind of gases to use to TIG weld these. And they come out beautiful. And also, we take the extra time to polish them. Most companies, they do like a, a, a matte finish. I think they're taking a scotch pride and they're kind of rubbing them down. These are polished. And if you can look at these welds, and that's a weld right there. You're not going to have any messy solder joints with our copper stills here. They're just badass, you ask me. But uh, one thing too, on this 26 gallon can, all our cans have two inch barrels now. But the 26, we got two places for the heating elements, which is way cool. So you can actually use the dual the control to heat this 26 gallon can is going to get the temperature really quick. So if you did buy this controller with that can, you get the heat real quick and turn one off. All right. So that's kind of neat. All right. Here's our dual purpose copper tower. Um, our two in one, basically. Now this stainless steel jacket is welded to the outside of this two inch copper tubing. So that's your re reflex jacket. All right. One thing neat about these things too, you can always adjust these where you want them. You can bend these around because you got the, the union net up here. A uh, nice three inch dial thermometer. All right. So, and also you detach this and hook it right to the can. And then you got some pot still. That's why you call it two in one. It's a pot still or a reflex. Pretty neat stuff. I like them. But, uh, all right. One thing I really is, am excited about on this video is our new 110 controller. This is a 13 gallon can with a 40 inch, 3 inch diameter column, our torpedo, 2 in 1. Um, and we actually got this thing running off a 110 controller. It took two and a half hours to get this thing up and running, but before we could never find a 110 that actually pushed this big of a still. Uh, it always had to be a 220. And the 220 is also you know, a great one to use, but if you don't have a 220 outlet, this is an option. These are brand new. These 110 controllers, and it's a 15 amp breaker we're using. And it's actually push, pushing this 13 gallon torpedo. And this is completely packed, halfway, halfway up with copper, halfway up with uh, ratchet rings. And it's coming out pretty good right there. Um, let me see. Ha! I wanted to show you how strong it's coming out. Let me see if I can get this really quick. That's still in. You can't be spilling alcohol. No, this ain't alcohol, this is only water, right? I'll 
get my cameraman in here really quick. He's actually a manager. That's Jason. He's the one you talk to a lot of times if you call for questions. We got it coming out kind of fast. I might not be as as high as percentage I usually I usually like. I usually like to get 90, 93 percent. It's about 93 percent. Is it? Yep. Okay, cool. I can't. I don't have my glasses. I can't see shit. So <laughs> sucks getting old, man. Your hair falls out. You can't see no more. Oh man. But uh, so that's the new controller. Oh yeah. Let me show you this. Come here. Come here. Come here. Our uh, elements, they all come with a nice little neat little box and they clamp right into the cans. As you can see that element, it just, they just slide in, you take the clamp and it just clamps in. See that? Very simple, takes a second. And these, they all have the same plugs. They'll plug into any of our controllers, except for the, the quad. That one has to be, like I said, professionally installed by an electrician. You don't want to mess with it. All right? <laughs> okay, over to the keg your ass over here. If you guys are doing a beer keg as a boiler, they make great boilers. So uh, first thing you do is get a screwdriver and stand back. You don't want to get too close when you're pushing down this ball. If you got pressure in there, because the beer will come flying out. First time I done it, I got soaked. Uh, yeah, it kind of sucked. But <laughs> push that ball down, get all the pressure out. Then, I'm sorry I lost the ring, but if you can see these little tabs right here, you get a screwdriver, there's a, there's a little ring that goes right up, right in this little lip right here. It's hard to see, you can't really see it. But you get a little screwdriver, kind of get around that ring, you pop that ring up. Once you get the ring out, then this thing, you just tilt it, you turn it, and it pulls out. The whole thing pulls out, okay? And the hook on a tower, basically, now here's a two inch call. Basically we got to use an O ring, okay? Don't trip, dude. Sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place here. <laughs> Trying to get good help these days, man, I tell you. <laughs> so that just clamps on right like so. <clears throat> and you got a nice heavy duty stainless steel. And uh, I'm going to take that off. And I'll show you another thing we can do. So that's the two inch column connecting right to the top of there. I'm going to set this over here. Now, if you want a three inch, uh, you take a two to three inch connector, put that on there, set that on there, clamp that on there, like so, just like the two inch. And now it's a three inch. Now you can connect, let's say, that torpedo tower on, or any three inch uh, diameter column onto your beer keg. And the permit going from two inch to three inch, it's not going to slow it down, believe me. Don't worry about it. I get that question a lot. Don't worry about it. And, Four inch. Here's our two to four inch connector. So I'm trying to hurry. Last time we done this video about 20 minutes ago, we went well, actually a half hour ago. We went way over. And we actually ran out of disc space on the camera. So now, if you wanted to go to a four inch column, like a flute would fit on that. If you got, if you're gonna have a flute on it, I'd definitely say support it somehow from the ceiling because the flute's kind of top, top heavy. But uh, and the beer kegs, you know, they're pretty sturdy, but it's uh, kind of thin material up here, so it could start to, if you get a lot of weight on there, it could start to, you know, be a little wiggly, I guess you could say. All right, we got that, 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 right? Okay. Now to pack the columns. Let me move this stuff around a little bit. One momento. I definitely want to thank all my customers out there. Like I said, we've been doing this for 13 years now, bringing you videos. And uh, you guys have been great. It's funny, I go back looking at my old videos, and back then I had, my hair had color, and I had a lot more hair. Yeah, it's kind of a shame now. I look at my videos I'm doing these days, like, what the hell happened? But, oh well. Okay, what was I going to show you? I, you guys like to see me beat the crap out of things once in a while. Okay. So, <clears throat> I always say how, how strong I hold this stuff. It's a 16 gauge, super polished, uh, <clears throat> two inch tubing right here. And our welds are like perfected. These things make it. We, we don't fuck around. Ha. So that's, here's a parrot. We've got a bunch of parrots up there. These things, man. I 
I said, if somebody breaks into your house, you got one of these, right off that, man, it's a weapon. And they better run the fuck out of there. I can't, I gotta stop cussing on these things. Damn. Okay, we're gonna pack a column. Let me see. What am I doing? Okay, lid. I'm trying to rush this. I don't want to rush it, but I got to. Uh, wait. I want to put a column that has a flange up on top. All right. To pack these columns and the hoses. Pay attention. I want to show you once. So what I do this is a two inch, and they all basically go the same way. The two and three inch torpedoes, dual purpose. Uh, the Basically, they all pack the same, and all, they, all the water lines hook up the same, okay? So, you want to kind of roll up a, not, not like really snug, but you want, you want it tight, but not like super snug, okay? <clears throat> super tight, whatever. So, I take that, and I kind of like, okay, that's going to fit pretty good. Cut it. Da, 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 da. Ah. That up in there, and I'll, I'll cut a couple of them, and I'll usually pack the column halfway up with copper. Then after I get the column halfway packed up with copper, I will take it, and I'll grab my milk can lid has a screen. Can you see that? It's a new camera too, so we're kind of... Got it. It zooms really fast, I guess. So, one thing nice with these milk cans, you got the built-in screens, it gives you kind of a... Don't need those. See, the columns are completely empty, so they're easy to clean. <clears throat> One thing, too, I want to point out, you know, copper is beautiful, and uh, they look great, but I prefer stainless myself still, just because they're easy to clean and they're very durable. And that's why we put the copper mesh. You get the same effects from a copper still since you're using the mesh. Actually, the vapors, I think you actually might get better effects because the vapors are going through that big wad of mesh up in there and um, it comes out really nice. So, uh, what else am I going to do? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I suggest using half and half. And also, just experiment. Maybe try all copper, all rings. The rings for me and my experiments, it seems to make my, run, my still run faster. I get a higher percentage at a faster rate. So, um, but some people disagree with me, and that's fine. Uh, but, um, so, halfway up the copper, and I take the rings, and I'll put my hand like this, and I'll pour them in, and I'll pour, I usually pack my column up about an inch or two from the, the out tube right here, the condenser going out, right? So, basically, I'm not going to, don't want to make a mess, so I just take the bag, and I put my hand in, and I just pour them in, and kind of shake the column to get until they pack. Probably maybe the tap a little bit. All right. Okay. <clears throat> we got that. Now for the hoses. Oh, one more thing. Okay. Hold on. You'll see on all my my stills, you'll have the option for the regular bung with a uh, cook thermometer. These actually work great. Um, this is a natural. What is it? A rubber it's gum. Gum rubber. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and these just stick right on top of there, nice and neat. They work good, nothing wrong with them. But if you want something a little bit fancier, these uh, three-inch style thermometers, it's like an option, extra, I think, $69. We got a weld-on extra flange. Uh, it comes with a, a stainless cap with a half-inch MPT, and it has to uh, have another clamp. That's why you know, it's kind of costly, $69. Hold on, hold on, okay. Simple enough, it goes on like so. So now, since we got the column packed, we're gonna hook up the hoses. Like I said, they're all the same. Why don't you come here real quick? Get over here, get over, come on, come on, come on. Not a lot of time. Uh, <clears throat> so, my water coming in is going to the tower on the bottom of the reflux. And it's going through the reflux, out the top of the reflux to the bottom of the condenser. The bottom of the condenser, Out and it goes back out to the drain. All right. Okay. I want to show you how to hook it up again. All right. We get this question a lot. I do have another video someplace. Ah. So. So let me see. I usually use my garden hose. I got my garden hose coming into my shop or my my house. Um. And 
I'll run it through the still and I'll run it back out to my yard and I'll run it around the bushes and stuff. But the water coming out can be kind of hot, so make sure you don't burn your plants or your grass. Make sure that I, I run around my trees and stuff, but uh, I also turn it up high enough where it's not going to come out too hot. So, water in the bottom of the green box on the tower. Alright, then let me see. Hold on. And on top of the reflux, going back down to the bottom of the condenser. <clears throat> Coming up here, then this is going back out. All right? That's why these are kind of staggered on different sides. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Pretty simple. I had to check myself. But it doesn't really matter. It's just so you got the water running through it, it's going to work fine. Like I said, experiment. It might work better for you having these things totally switched around. It's not a huge... It's not going to make a big difference. It didn't even notice, notice the difference. All right? So it doesn't matter how you pack your column. There's no perfect way to do it. Experiment. Experiment with the water lines. Experiment with the pack. All right? And you'll find what works best for what you're doing with it. All right? Um, cool. Oh, one more thing I want to show you real quick. What is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see tons of, uh, tons of towers out there that look like mine. Now, these are all Chinese knockoffs, which is fine. They're not bad. Badly built, um, but they're not as nice as ours, I don't believe. You can tell they grind a lot on them. Uh, I've seen burn through, some of the wells are kind of rough. I got another video someplace that I really kind of go into detail about these. But um, a lot of companies are out there, were selling, well, you'll see them all over the internet. These other companies were charging way too much. So I decided, hey, it's my, my design, I'm going to basically resell them too. But I want to bring the price down so. Um, you know, <clears throat> actually doing that was good because the other companies have to bring their price down to mine, basically. And they're all pissed off. <laughs> I pissed off a lot of people in this industry since I started this company because they don't like that I sell my stuff a little bit lower than everybody, well, a lot lower than anybody else. But, uh, hey, thank you very much. Hope you uh, learned something. Uh, take care.